Oh, testing. Um, can you hear me? Please respond. Uh, yes. All right, thank you. Okay, can you see um, the screen that I'm sharing? Yes. Yes, eh? all right. Um, I think there's a background sound there. Um, is the airport, eh? So let me just check. But I think it's okay. My my voice is clear, right? Yeah, I think it's clear. It's clear just that there's a background sound there uh, that's the aircon so it's okay all right so it's 9 a.m so let's see how many students join in eleven Level only. Check. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, let's just start the the class, eh? So, uh, salam alaikum and a very good morning to all. Okay, so today is a week. Today is week six, eh? So week six is that I already shared to you, uh, in ULEARN what are the documents that you should uh, uh download, and also what you should prepare before this week class, eh? So as usual, I'll go to ULEARN and take the attendance, eh? So go now and take the attendance. Okay, ten students. Eh? Okay, thank you very much. So let's just directly go to the uh, topic uh, for today. Eh? So for today is that uh, I'm going to uh, deliver the chap topic on chapter chapter three and chapter four. Eh? So the learning outcome for the for today is that you're going to able uh, students are able to explain the requirement for signal conditioning and the types of signal conditioning for microelectronic system. Okay, and the second one is that able to analyze and select the suitable signal conditioning for microelectronic system. And uh, the third one is to explain the requirement of data presentation system. And uh, the last one is to able to select the suitable data presentation system for a macro system. So basically, uh, for the learning outcome A and B is for chapter three, and for C and D is chapter four. And why I combine it? Because it's not that um, much lah to, to actually, um, uh, the, the content is not that much lah if you look at the uh, slide for chapter three and four, and also for the Bolton, uh, uh, notes eh, books that I already shared. Eh. So, as mentioned in Telegram, eh, so I have uh, gone through uh, the your your assessment that I have given to you. So, on the feedback before we start, eh, a reminder to all. Eh. So, um, the feedback form that I give to student weekly, week one until week five, uh, recently is for student to actually um, to 
to evaluate their own understanding on the topic. Eh? It's not for me. Okay, it's for you guys. So if you able to explain uh, what I asked means that summarize what I have to ask. you have learned for week week five, week four, and so on, and what you have learned, you explain in detail what you have learned. So I know that you understand the topic. But if you simply answer everything is good, one sentence only, one sentence five words. So it, that's meaning that. Students are being lazy in terms of summarizing what they have learned for that day. And if you are even lazy to do that for that uh, feedback form, I'm not sure what, how you are going to go by answering for midterm and also for final exam. Okay, so don't be lazy now because that will impact to your uh, marks later on in midterm and final exam. So, uh, Normally, in every week lessons, I will mention that students need to submit the feedback form by before the next class. So basically, for week five, students should already submit it yesterday, okay, week five. But unfortunately, when I check this morning on the feedback, uh, I can only see that only five stu uh, 10 students uh, answer for uh, week five, eh? And uh, with four, also 14, but uh, the total student is actually 21 students. So for all the weekly lessons, not all students completed the feedback form. Eh? So please, please do the feedback form. Because if you don't do it uh, after week six this week, those who didn't submit the week, uh, the, week uh, the feedback form will be removed from this session. Eh? Okay, you're not going to be in this group anymore. Okay, because you do not want to participate. So I assume that you're not in this class. All right, so please do the feedback form. Okay, that is one thing. And another thing is that on how students answer the feedback form. Okay, let me just show to you um, that an example of a good way how to answer the feedback form. Okay, example uh, like... Uh, Come Senkwa here. So the question was describe what you have learned in week five. Eh? So he explained that he learned about two types of sensor, blah, blah, blah. So I know that, and I, I already ex uh, explained that at least students need to um, minimum five sentences explaining. And you can do more than five sentences if you want. Okay, no limit. But I don't want students to answer like this. Eh, sorry, Ashraf, but I need to tell you and other students right now, they don't answer like this. Okay, discuss about selection of a sensor for task 3 and task 2. So what did you actually learn for that task 2 and 3? Okay, what you have learned? Yeah, I know that it gave you task 2 and 3, but what you have learned? Okay, and everything good. Uh, I assume that not, that nothing is good unless you explain in detail what you have learned. Eh? Okay, an uh, example of yeah, you, Tuan Irfan, uh, Luman. Okay, it's good to explain like this. And like Tuan Irfan also, he explained that he is still confused about how many sensors being used and so on. So if I have time later on, I will get back to this question. Eh? Okay, so, um, uh, so please avoid answering something like this and also some like uh too short too short point not good yeah uh, but if you feel that that's good enough for you then it's okay and i assume that in your midterm you will score for the exam okay right and for quizzes uh, and i already told you guys in the class online uh yes uh, last week class eh? so um yeah my all my documents or quizzes is under weekly lessons and you might be thinking oh where where did dr maran put the quiz uh, chapter two okay i already give you a tip go up here and go to this course and you know that there's a attendance that i gave to student okay assignment if there are any assignment feedback if I, uh, you click their feedback and directly you can click on that feedback to fill that form okay yeah? uh and also for the quizzes so i from here directly i i know that the summary of the quiz how many students attempted the quiz here eh? so um for example quiz a uh, week two eh? 
Mm. I can actually filter here. Okay. Enroll user who have not entered the quiz. Show you for that. Okay, so this five student didn't attempt the quiz. All right. So um and I do not know if you don't attempt this quiz, I think you will fail for midterm. Okay, and as I mentioned, midterm exam, the and I shared in Telegram, midterm exam, uh, purposely we, uh, in Telegram group, why people students are asking which link? I think I already gave the link in Yulen, right? Yulen? Did you click the link in Yulen? Li, Shi, Tian, I just, I'm just reading your Telegram, eh? message in telegram and eh? normally i don't look at telegram once i start class eh? if you want to ask something before class start eh? okay anyway uh in the telegram group lee is is lee inside here lee yeah. are you in yeah, ah, yeah okay normally the link eh i wouldn't give in telegram the link is inside you learn and it will be the same link used throughout this semester same link okay so go to you learn everything is a you learn basically you ask that means that you didn't go to you learn that's all okay and um about the midterm exam okay if you look at telegram okay that i give to you you can look your telegram now um, the tentative date is 15 December, and this is I purposely ask. Uh, we discuss, I discuss with uh, PM Dr. Fahmi regarding the exam. Supposedly, the midterm exam should be after directly after midterm break, which is week eight. Okay, but uh, since uh, some of the students just entered uh, the class in week four or week four or week five, so um, we you feel that student do not have time. This new student might not have time to actually uh, cover from the previous week. They did not, they did, uh, which they did, they did not join the classes, okay? This is chapter one and two. So, um, I asked uh, PM Fahmi that we, we delay the midterm, um, midterm exam to, I think with 15 December is week nine, eh? week nine or week 10, eh? okay? So, Week nine, I think. So basically, it will be in, on 15 December. So right now, uh, in the Telegram, I already asked student to block their calendar, and uh, nobody mentioned anything about uh, there's any uh, there's uh, another exam on that day or classes. So assuming that that the exam will be on that time and day. So 15 December, 8.30 p.m. to 9.30. Why we make it at a um, night exam? Due to the fact that this subject is taken by a second year student and also direct entry student, first year and even second year student direct entry. So uh, you guys have uh, multiple different schedule eh, which you cannot match with any of the student schedule. You, you guys are only free at night. So you're going to have the exam on uh, 15 December on Thursday night, lah. 8.30 to 9.30, one hour. And the question will be MCQ. So what's it, what is uh, MCQ? M MCQ is multiple choice question. So multiple choice question is the question, the exact question, I mean the exact type of question that you're answering for quiz. Okay, the quiz that we ask you PM for me and myself, we give the same quiz and question eh, to student. Okay, so from this quiz, um, if you attempt the quiz, and uh, like I said, uh, for the first time, I'm going to uh, lock the attempt to only one time. And since uh, there are few students who do not yet uh, answer for quiz one, I think uh, like quiz one just now was five students. Maybe it's the new student that entered and didn't do this quiz yet. So, um, student, uh, director student who just, just joined, please make sure that 
before you answer the quiz, of course, please go through the lesson. Okay, the quiz is under different uh, week. Yeah? So it should be, you can directly see there. Okay, example, quiz one, which is chapter one quiz is in week two. Basically, in order for you to answer a uh, quiz one, you need to go through week one and week two lessons. Okay, don't simply go and answer quiz one without doing some revision. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and once, and I am going to tell you this, once you open the quiz, it's going to automatically submit once you close it. You don't, you don't need to click submit button. Once you close your browser, it will automatically submit and you cannot redo it. It's like an exam. Only one time open. Eh? So make sure that when you want to attempt the quiz, you are ready to attempt it. Okay, and the quiz is not much uh, question is only about 15 question okay, not much but it's all referring if you did the quiz you know that the quiz is basically referring to the textbook and the textbook uh, is the one that I shared to you guys is the Bolton PDF according to chapter so that's the reason why I shared to you Bolton PDF other than my own slide eh? Bolton is a textbook and you need to read the textbook in order for you to understand and to answer the quiz quizzes. Eh? Okay. Same goes to quiz number two. So if you want to uh, answer quiz number two, of course, you need to go to lesson three and four. Okay. And it's covering chapter two. So please do the quiz because I noticed that. Okay. Example here, quiz number two. I can look at. The summary of marks. Eh? This is first attempt, so I can directly look at the summary. And I see that uh, there are three students get full, almost full mark here, five, uh, out of 10. Um, four students get uh, nine marks, okay, and so on. So more than half get more than five marks nah, over 10. But there are still students getting low marks. Eh? One student getting three marks. And zero, one student getting zero marks. And this is what I said. This is might be because you opened the quiz and you didn't do any attempt. Or you didn't do anything. You just open it and once it's open, when and it, when it's closed, it will directly submit it as an attempt. It's similar like uh, for an exam lah, because I didn't put there the time limit. Okay, didn't put any time limit. It's based on attempt. Once closed, automatically submit. All right. So make sure that and okay. Um, the marks you should be able to look at your marks. Okay, look at your marks. I uh, those who already answer for quiz one and two, please take note of your marks. Okay, for example, like Kumaresh, you got seven point five four five eh, over ten. So you know that oh, I didn't get full mark. Why? Okay. Why is you need to study for a spec the book, okay? And of course, it's an open book, kan? Because it's you can answer it uh, by referring to anything, okay? Right now, right now lah. In the midterm, you cannot refer to anything, to any books, okay? So when you answer this, make sure that you are ready to answer it and try another attempt and to get at least more than nine marks lah then over nine over ten so i will only open multiple attempt once all student attempted eh? so right now like a uh, quiz two okay this four students same the same student has not attempted uh the quiz eh? okay so please don't Take too long time because you are dragging the class. Okay, because I'm waiting for you, this four student or five student in quiz one. If you are dragging it, then uh, you you will know your marks for the first attempt. Then you can do improvement later on. Okay, so once um, I, I'm going to give uh, the student until uh, only tomorrow. Eh? Because I already give you ample time until week five right now. Week six, eh? this is week six. So you have ample time to actually do the quizzes. 
Okay, so until tomorrow is the deadline to do quiz one and two. After that, I'm going to open for multiple attempt for the other students. So for the student who did not did uh, did not do the first attempt, then you won't actually know how to improve it. Which question that you get a uh, low marks? Eh? Right? Understood? Okay, so apa ni? Doctor, the screen share is kind of blurry for some, including me. Uh, I don't know. The screen share is what shown on my PC. Uh, if it's blurry, then maybe it's your computer. Blurry is what? Not sharp? Um, I'm not sure. Sorry. Eh? Okay, so um, anyway, class must go on. I think it's if blurry, make sure that your font size on your laptop is uh, large eh? and don't. And as I, as I mentioned, actually, eh, in you learn, okay, what did I mention when we have online class? What is number two? It's advisable for you to on your camera, okay, if you have strong connection to internet. Means that is if you are at home or in UTEM campus, why don't you open your camera so that I can actually look at your face? Because right now I'm looking at my computer. Eh? I do not see any faces. Uh, so, um, and if you were a lecturer, you will hate actually talking to a laptop. <laughs> okay, without any response. I do not see any response, any reaction face. Eh? So it doesn't feel good for me, even any lecturer to deliver class to a monitor, <laughs> okay? So uh, if you open your camera, at least I, oh, okay, thank you, Yunus, for opening the camera. So at least I know that you're there, not sleeping or doing something else, eh? So you are focusing uh, for in my class, right? Um, so uh, use that eh? uh, use whatever technology we have right now we are lucky to be born in 2000 eh? because why you are doing your degree having all of this technology you have the wi-fi you have and uh, my time during undergraduate back in 2000, uh, 2003, 2000 to 2003, we don't have Wi-Fi, eh? we don't have camera, we don't even have smartphone. You only have Nokia 3310, the one that you campak, kat, campak anjing ke, mati anjing tu. Okay, besar kan? So, um, be great, uh, grateful that you are in this timeline of technology, lots of technology, but for some reason, it, it makes people become more uh, not respective to other people, eh? not opening the camera when we have this online class. Okay, so um, I prefer that students are here to actually uh, listen uh, and I can see their faces and their reaction. Okay, so uh, thank you for those who open their camera. Okay, so let's go. Any question before I start? Uh, oh. No, eh? All right. So, can you see the slide? Is the slide okay? Yes, you can see. Yes, sir. All right. Sekejap eh, I, I try masuk kat handphone I because I'm not sure what you guys are looking at eh. It's not a display slide eh, no eh. Okay, okay. in chapter 3 eh, okay, we are going to learn about signal conditioning. Alright, so just directly jump into it. So this chapter 3 will be mapped to LO3. LO is learning outcome and which is analyzing selection and integration of mechatronic components. So in chapter 1 and 2, you have learned um, you have learned regarding the chapter 1 was introduction to mechatronics, right, system. And chapter 2 was on the um, sensor and transducer. 
Okay, you have learned uh, there are different types of sensor. You have a uh, force sensor, you have displacement sensor, you have uh, uh, different other sensors, eh? okay, a level sensor and so on. So based on that, okay, um, these uh, sensors, you need to have some sort of signal conditioning in order for you to read the data, the analog signal, eh? and send it to a computer. Okay, so... Uh, Based on that is uh, towards the end of this chapter, student able to explain the requirement for signal conditioning, to explain the type of signal conditioning, and also to analyze the selected solute and select the suitable signal conditioning. Eh? Alright, so uh, just a recap on what you have learned. A recap. So in you know that this is an overall view of a mechatronic system. And you have learned about an uh, introduction, what are micro system, and you have learned in chapter two about sensor and transducer. So sensor and transducer is under which block? Okay, before that, just a quick question. How many types of uh, system under mechatronics system? How many? Guys? <laughs> How many? In chapter one. Recap, recap. Chapter Three. one. Three. Okay, what um okay, when when I ask question, okay, tip a tip, tip. Even when you go for interview or anything, interview for LI or interview for job later on, when people ask question, how many type of signal condition, uh, uh, how many type of mechatronic control, uh, mechatronic system, a uh, block diagram that you have learned? Okay, the tip is that don't answer only three. Okay, answer just three. Stop. That's not a good way to answer. A good way to answer is that answer three and elaborate. What are the three component? The three. Block diagram. Okay, so let me ask again. How many types of mechatronic system uh, that you have learned? How many? Uh, three main system, uh, control system, actuation system, measurement system. All right, good, Ashraf. So three types, eh? Three types. And what you have learned previously in Chapter 2 was on the measurement system right measurement system and you have learned about the sensor okay eh? sensor so if you see in a block of measurement system okay it's connected to a signal conditioning interface here okay and the sensor is actually connected to the output from the actuator means that if you have a motor then uh, the motor, you know, that is going to move in rotation or linear motion, right? And it's going to give you motion, means that displacement. And how are you going to measure that displacement? So you need to have a sensor. So that's why the end of the actuator is going to be connected to a sensor over here. Okay, so for the sensor, it's important that you know uh, why you require the signal conditioning over here. And also, um, in chapter 4, you will need the data presentation. Data presentation means that example is a display, okay? Oscilloscope or a graph, how to capture the data that you, you, get, you read from the sensor. So all of these are under here, measurement system. And if you see also under the um, actuation system over here, eh, okay? You still, you also have the signal conditioning. Okay, and you can directly make a conclusion actually from the sensor. Okay, output of from the sensor is an analog signal. Eh? Analog, it gives you a value, either voltage value or current value. And um, in order for you, for, for a mechanical system, eh, you want to control something using a computer or computerize it. You want to control it using this DSP port or using an Arduino. So, Arduino can only read in binary, okay, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. So it's in digital 
signal. So that's why you will have you you will learn in this signal conditioner is that to convert the analog signal, that the requirement is to convert analog signal to a digital signal. So the output from the sensor is analog, and when you have a A to D over here, A to D is analog to digital, then the output from this block will be a digital. And only when you have this digital signal, then only you can process it. Okay, so digital signal going inside here, and you can process it using a controller. So controller is something that you will design it, okay, using um, a software. So software can only read digital, okay, digital value. So digital value, so that's why you need co to convert it to digital so that it can be read by your computer or laptop or software. Eh? And the output from this controller will be a digital signal. So like I said, um, for, for the actuator here, in actuator and sensor is almost the same thing. The input to an actuator, it can read only analog. Okay, so therefore, in the actuator system, also you will need a, a converter, yeah, to convert from digital to analog over here. All right. So chapter three, signal conditioning. You are going to learn a signal conditioning that will be applied to both these two system, which is in measurement system and actuator. It's the same thing. It's just a duplicate. Uh, it's that it's a similar concept. Eh? Okay. So a summary about what you have learned in previous uh, class eh, is that um, about sensor and transducer is that uh, you have you know that the function of sensor is to produce signal you know, relating to the element, which is quantity to be measured okay so if it's displacement is it measuring in millimeter or centimeter and so on okay if it's in a temperature is it measuring in a cells uh, degree uh, or in fahrenheit and so on okay and the element under sensor is that uh, uh, different type of sensor you have displacement position proximity sensor okay proximity sensor is uh, the ultrasonic sensor Okay, velocity and motion sensor. Okay, we, if we talk about velocity sensor, actually you cannot find velocity sensor. But normally, uh, we will use displacement or position sensor. And then from there, we will uh, differentiate it. Okay, d over dt, and you will get velocity. Okay, displacement, when you differentiate it, you will get the velocity. And when you differentiate velocity, you will... Uh, get the acceleration okay so you will only need one sensor to actually capture data for velocity and also for acceleration right okay um so for the signal conditioning okay function okay so what you're going to learn is that you're going to you're going to learn about how to process a signal to make it suitable for the next operation like i said uh, from the sensor the signal is in analog so you are going to prepare it for the computer for the software can it read it so is it in is it required in uh, in terms of voltage value okay uh, for uh, and if you have used Arduino before, eh? Arduino, the the maximum uh, maximum voltage that it can read is about up to uh, uh, 15 voltage, uh, 0 to 15 voltage. It depends on the uh, different types of Arduino. Eh? So sometimes it's 0 to 10, sometimes it's 0 to 10 volt. Okay, so you need to prepare that uh, uh, the system, the reading from the sensors or from the actuator the reading need to be read in terms of voltage. Okay, if it's in milli voltage, it's too small. The output from the sensor is too small. So what you need to do is that you need to amplify that reading so that it can be read okay, later by the Arduino. Eh? And the second one is that limiting or reducing noises filter. For example, like just now, okay, uh, I'm not sure if you still can hear the background noise. Uh, of the aircon okay so that is noise okay you are actually listening to my voice 
and also there are background noise yeah so how do you eliminate that noise because when you capture a data if that is too noisy then you you cannot really control the uh, system okay because when you control the system it based on a signal but if the signal included noise from environment then it's very hard to control okay because there is disturbance so first of all you need to eliminate the noise by having filter okay and third one is that getting the signal into the right signal example just now like i said to convert it if it's an analog it can only read in analog uh, sensor and uh, the actuator is analog then you need to convert it to digital okay so how you convert it uh, it's actually not that difficult you have right now you have arduino okay you just need to know which pin to use and to convert it and you need to do some simple coding so that's why uh, in this chapter three and four okay and also for the next chapter yeah, actuator um you are, we are going to use um simulation okay using arduino eh? so i hope that by now by today you already downloaded the arduino ide okay and also you have uh log in and do an account one account for the uh think pad uh, think uh, think think pad block what was that the software uh, the, the, for the arduino simulation simulator eh? so please download that eh? please log into that okay number four okay um okay signal manipulation okay from non-linear to linear signal okay, i have um Example, eh, non-linear signal. What does it mean by non-linear signal? Just so you you have a you have a graph over here. You have a time. You have a reading of a, example. You have a reading of a displacement eh, in a millimeter. Okay, and means that this is a reading from a sensor, eh? and from the sensor, when you give you uh, you give a signal, okay, to the sensor from zero volt to ten volt, okay, zero volt to ten volt, okay, you found out that when you give it uh, zero volt to ten volt, in terms of linear lah, okay, means that zero one until ten with interval one volt, eh? you find out the graph looks like this. Oh, sorry. Because I'm sharing screen, yeah. So the the stylus is not very good in terms of detecting, yeah. Okay, so you see that um, okay, this is example of a non-linear displacement. Okay, non-linear means that why? when we give a zero voltage it's going to give zero displacement but when you give five volt example okay and example this maximum displacement is uh, 10 millimeter eh? so when you give five volt this displacement is that is two mm eh? okay and when you give 10 volt the displacement is giving you uh, six mm so meaning that it's not linear. So um, most of control uh, system, eh, uh, it's easier to design or control it if the signal is linear. So what you need to do is that from this non-linear displacement, you are going to actually linear linearize the signal. And how do you linearize the signal is by adding a block diagram in between it so that it can read it and um, transfer it into a linear system so basically you do you are going to get what is the equation for this non-linear signal okay so um, like my my field of interest is on uh, non-linear actuator so non-linear actuator example like i mentioned uh, when you came to the lab eh, last week is uh, uh, electrostatic actuator is non-linear Electromagnetic actuator is non-linear or motor uh, or uh, the, 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 the motor that is using permanent magnet eh, 
mostly are non-linear except for DC motor. DC motor is linear because why? If you have used DC motor before, when you, you when you give zero volt until ten volt, it's going to give the same increment, okay, with displacement. Okay, it's not going to give this type of non-linear signal. So normally, if uh, very easy for you, if you are doing a mobile robot, people normally use DC motor because it's increasing uh, uh, regard, with respect to the voltage given. Eh? So easy to control the velocity and acceleration. Okay. And, um, uh, and number five, lastly, is uh, on the protection to prevent damage. Well, means that you're going to use some fuses or current limiter. Okay, sometimes the current limiter is an add-on devices that you add to the hardware. But sometimes you can also design it into the software. Example, you're using Simulium and MATLAB. So you can cut off the maximum voltage that the sensor or actuator can read so that it won't damage the devices. Okay, so um, these are the things that you need to know in signal conditioning and what are the elements uh, uh, that you are going to learn is in the textbook and example is operation amplifier. Okay, filtering, types of different filter, low pass filter, high pass filter, manual filter. Okay, with stone bridges, H bridge, digital signal, multiplayer, and so on. Eh? P, uh, and lastly is PWM. And PWM, if you have uh, noticed that uh, you already saw a video that uh, FYP student using PWM to control a mobile robot. Okay, the velocity of the mobile robot. Eh? Okay, um, any question before we go to the next slide? No? No way? Okay, so next slide is that I'm going to just um, show a general overview first of the measurement block diagram. Okay, you have, you know that uh, you have learned about the sensor and producer before, okay, in chapter two, and it's a uh, Sensor is used to measure something, okay? Measure displacement, measure force, okay? Measure a level and so on, okay? And the sensor and the output is in analog, okay? So analog, and you're going to give this, uh, the, and it's connected, it will be connected directly to signal conditioning, and that output from signal conditioning normally will be connected to a data presentation system. So what you are looking at right now, your monitor or handphone, is a type of data presentation system. Why? It's displaying something. Okay, you, you can see the video, right? The video, the voice, that is all data presentation. Okay, With it, without this video, um, how the computer read is all in digital, okay? So in the computer, there is something converting inside, okay? So a computer is very complex device. So it's converting all of it into something that can be read or hear or see, yeah? So data presentation is your laptop, your handphone, okay? The, the, the display on your handphone. And um, the traffic light, traffic light, green, yellow, red is also data presentation. Okay, something that you can see, indicator, eh? and something that give you a value, like you can read, oh, for in terms of your watch. For example, you, you are using smartwatch. Eh? So your smartwatch giving you the time, or oh, it's 9.45. That's a display. Eh? Okay, so value of that quantity is being displayed at the end here. Okay. So data presentation in chapter four is uh, you are, you will learn about two types, which is indicators. This one will give an instant visual indication of the sense variable, okay, and recorders. So record the output signal over a period of time and give permanent record. So recorder is normally something like your oscilloscope. Okay, when you do a troubleshooting using multimeter, you just can. Uh, take the value at that instance but if you want to record it you want to capture the data and plot it somewhere then you need to record it you capture the data so um, recorder also 
like in, in Arduino is something that you can record, you can capture that data. Okay. If you do some coding, lah. if you don't do any coding, then it not, it's not going to capture the data. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's for that slide. Okay. okay, sorry for the mess here, but just look at it. Okay, for signal, uh, for this slide is that um, example of how you are connecting the sensor. Okay, one sensor, which is a thermal couple over here. Okay, this is a thermal couple. Um, you are connecting it to the signal conditioning over here. So this one is uh, your sensor. This one is your signal conditioning. Conditioning, and this one is your data presentation. All right. So uh, if you see thermocouple, okay, thermocouple. You can measure the picture, right? So this is a type of transducer or sensor, and it's going to give a read to read or give reading to the output, and that output is something that um the the reading from the thermocouple is very small. It's in millivolt, okay? Normally it's in millivolt, small. It depending on the temperature given, eh? So if it's small, too small, then what you need to do is that you need to amplify the voltage why you need to imply voltage is that example like arduino it can read 0 to 10 volt or 0 to 15 volt eh? okay, depending on that okay so if it can read from 0 to 10, 10 volt and you know that arduino is a uh, very uh, uh, cheap uh, dsp board eh? and the cost is uh, i think like 60 ringgit the one that you can purchase okay so 0 to 10 volt and the resolution for Arduino is very low. Okay, you have learned in um, chapter one eh, about resolution. Eh? The data that it can read is really low. It cannot read in millivolt. Okay, millivolt, uh, maybe 0 0.1 volt is okay, but it cannot read 0 0.01 uh, 001 volt, eh, which is millivolt. Eh? It cannot read that. Okay, so when you have very small uh, reading from the thermocouple over there, okay, what you need to do is that to in order for the Arduino to read, because it can only read from 0 to 10 volt and the resolution might be 0 0.1 volt only, example. Eh? So you need to amplify the signal from the thermocouple so that it can be read. Okay, amplify it. Okay, so this is where uh the 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 information that you learn in chapter two eh, okay on the data sheet okay you have learned that the what is the range of the sensor okay range of the sensor it can read between zero to thirty uh, degree okay so I'll say eh? okay and you have learned also the resolution and in the data sheet normally it will see what are the re resolution of the sensor okay so um assuming that okay if you have, um, let's say, the reading is uh, the, the, the data sheet shows that it's, it can read from 0 to 50 volt. Eh? Okay? And for the Arduino, it can read only up to 10 volt. Okay? So, meaning that, okay, based on this, can you get... Uh, can you calculate what is the gain to convert it between from this 50 volt to 10 volt from the thermocouple? Okay, let me just uh, open. Just open a slide.
All right. So let me just explain again. So you have a thermocouple. Okay. With the reading in uh, the range is from 0 to 50 degree. Eh? Okay. So, um, so this is the log. Okay. Reading from 0 to 50 degree. And you're going to send this signal, okay, to an Adreno, which is can read 10 volt. 10 volt, yeah. Okay, so this one is in Celsius, yeah. Okay, so, and if you look at the data sheet, normally in the data sheet, it will mention that what are the output that uh, the thermocouple can read. So let's say that uh, the output from the thermocouple is given by uh, 0 to 5 volt only. Okay, 0 to 5 volt. So 0 to 5 volt, okay, and this Arduino is can read from 0 to 10 volt. Okay, so if, let's say that I'm going to draw again this block and by having the same voltage at the input and output there. Eh? So this is the voltage I'm taking out the maximum value, so 5 volt. Okay, we want the thermocouple when it gives the maximum value here, we want it to show the maximum value in Arduino. So it's going to be on par. Eh? So what do you think is the value of gain in the in the middle here? So let's say this is y output, this is x input. Okay, and you know that mathematics is normally y equal to m x. Right, so you have the gain. What is the gain value? Y over X, right? So you have five, uh, two, sorry, two. So the gain value is actually two. So you know that when you have this type of um, signal, so you have this Arduino. And this is your thermocouple reading. So you need to put a gain value, gain G equal to 2 in here. So that it's going to read the value. So if, let's say, yeah, okay, you have 2 volt over here. Okay, reading from the uh, thermocouple is 2 volt. Based on that, 2 volt is equivalent to whatever value lah that you have based on the data sheet. Yeah. So when you have 2 volt, the reading from thermocouple, so the gain is 2. So you just, you will get... 4 volt and this 4 volt will be plotted in your Arduino. It will send the signal to Arduino. Okay, so just another quick question. Eh? Okay, if you have 2 volt from the thermocouple, so what is the value in degree? The reading from the thermocouple that should be plotted in Arduino. Ma'am? Yeah? Sorry, may I ask a question? Uh... Is a y equal to mx or oh okay 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 sorry sorry mm -hmm. sorry I just realized okay okay yeah I just realized eh okay uh -huh. simple mathematics lah kan mm -hmm. so that simple mathematics kan yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, gain m lah okay mm -hmm. okay so boleh faham tak apa boleh tanya soalan tak faham okay uh -huh. my question my what my question again eh okay so um do you okay? My question again, eh? Okay, if um, so just now I was talking about the thermocouple, eh? Thermocouple, the range of the thermocouple is 0 to 5, uh, 50 degree, okay? And 0 to 50 degree, um, in given in the data sheet, it says that the thermocouple can read from 0 to 5 volt maximum. So, meaning that 0 0.5 volt maximum is equivalent to 50 degree lah. Right? You get what I mean? So, from here, okay, we are trying to convert the signal eh, from analog. So, analog signal is in terms of uh, this reading lah in a temperature degree. Eh? So, you, are, you need to convert it to digital. Digital, which is something that can be read by the Arduino. Okay, Andrido. And I have mentioned that in Andrino, he can read uh, 10 volt, 0 to 10 volt on maximum. If you give 12 volt, 
Arduino will damage you. Okay, so it's important that what you need to give the correct voltage to the Arduino. So that's why reading data sheet is important. Eh? Okay, so based on that, okay, you have, uh, you have, I already asked you just now, okay, when you have, uh, let's say example, you have the reading, you measure it, and the reading from thermal couple is 5 volt. Okay, so, and in Arduino, you want to plot the graph. Okay, and you know that in Arduino, it's going to read in voltage. So, when you have 5 volt, you know that 10 volt. So, when you have uh, five, uh, 5 volt, uh, 5 volt here, okay, 5 volt in uh, the input, okay, you can have here output is 10 volt. So, it's something like this, okay. If the gain here is 2, okay, 2, the slope, eh, 2. Okay, but we don't want it, the output to be in the reading on voltage. We want to have it in degree. So says, eh, we need to, to read in degree because why? We are using a thermocouple and we want to read it in a degree, okay? So this is where you need to do a conversion. Okay, to so that the signal can be read, okay, and it going to be translated into degree and display onto the to any uh, display unit lah. And you can directly see that oh, it's twelve degree, okay, and so on. Okay, so um, for five volt, the reading will be ten volt. Okay, for two volt, just now, okay, two volt. Let's say that two volt is over here, the reading will be four volt. Okay. So that's the gain there. Eh? So, um, but, okay, my question just now, okay, we don't want the value to be in voltage. We want it to be split in degree. So, for 2 volt value just now, okay, 5 volt, you already know, lah, 5 volt is actually equivalent to 50. So I'm not going to ask that question. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so um, 5 volt over here, okay, the equivalent will be 50 degree. Okay, for 4 volt, what is the equivalent? The same thing. How, how, how do you calculate? What is the value for 4 volt? What, what is the degree? Guys, simple math. Brother? 40? Sure? Okay. Half, half sure. Half sure. Okay, let, let me just um, show, uh, to make you confirm your answer, eh? okay? Okay. Okay, let's just draw again a block diagram. You have here 0 to 5 volt, which is equivalent to you want to do this uh, log app, and it's equivalent to 0 to 50. So we look at the maximum value only. Okay, so this is you know output input. So what is mx plus mx? So m is what is m? 10 again. Ten, right? Yes. Ten, right? So if it's ten, then you know that if you have four wood, so what's the output here? Forty. Right? So just now who answered that? Forty? It's correct. Okay? So this is how you confirm the value. So what you were calculating just now, okay? The gain here, m equal to ten. Okay, m equal to 2 is the gain that you need to know um, when you do, uh, uh, when you design a macro system. Eh? Because in digital, in this, in this, in a digital system, it's not going to read in analog okay, value. So you need to convert it. Okay, uh, analog value is the one that you uh, measure, eh? 50 degree, millimeter, okay, and so on. Eh? So you need to convert that value to a value that can be read by the Arduino. 
for the computer, which is voltage. Okay, so conversion of that analog to digital. Okay, and vice versa. Lah. So when you want to convert back from digital to analog, it's the same thing. Just use the same gain value. Same gain value. So this is really important eh, in a mechatronic system. Okay. So let me just close that. And by the way, uh, I think you guys know this. What is this? Eh? This is whiteboard. Eh? Microsoft whiteboard. I think everybody have this one. Eh? Uh, you can you uh, you can have the Microsoft 360. Microsoft 360 is free for our VTAP student. So you, do, you can download it and install. So you can get, you can have this whiteboard also. Eh? Right. So based on that, we go back to this slide. Eh? So this slide shows uh, the thermal couple just now. And what I explained just now is uh, this part. Okay. And up until this area only for the gain value. Okay, you amplify it, but after, uh, not amplify it, you, you uh, get the value, eh? okay? And if it's reading is too small, then you are going to go use some amplification, eh? amplify signal. So that is where you have the gain value just now, okay? And that value, you need to convert it from analog to display, okay? Analog to digital. So we call that uh, everything here, it, you can call it as the uh, signal conditioning, okay? And plus the signal, the microcontroller inside them. Yeah? And uh, lastly, once you can read that data in digital, then you can display it on any display unit, LED or display and so on. Yeah? Okay, so uh, this one, number one to seven, everything I already explained just now. Okay, on, in, in terms of the summary, yeah? so we are going to go one by one, uh, but not, not one by one. You, later, you are, we have a group discussion to explain that. Yeah? So let's look at uh, this one. Okay, why we need the signal conditioning? Okay, the signal from the sensor or from the actuator is too small. It mainly would. So you need to amplify it. So you need to do this amplifier. Okay, it contains uh, contains some noises. So you need to remove that. You need to have a filter. Okay, and you. The signals sometimes are non-linear, so you need to linearize it. So we call it as linearizing, and that's mostly are done using a software, okay, coding. And uh, some of the signal are in analog form or in even in digital. So it depending on the environment that you're going to use. So if it's in, it, if you want to actually control the system, then you need to convert analog signal to digital. Okay, so you need to use A to D, eh, sorry, uh, A to D, ADC is analog digital converter lah, or we can just, you can just type that A to D and D to A. Okay, and resistance, okay, resistance change to be changed into current changes. So this is where you have all of this, eh? the Whipstone bridges, voltage divider, I think you have learned this in circuit, eh? circuit one and two. And then H bridge. So H bridge is mostly you are going to use it in uh, controlling a motor. Okay. And lastly is uh, voltage change uh, to ch changes into suitable current. Eh? Changes. Eh? So sometimes um, the the output from the signal is in current. Okay. But uh, the the for the for the uh, signal processing okay it can only read in voltage okay you cannot send a current to the current value like ampere into a arena okay in milli ampere is okay but not in one ampere and so on so you need it it need to be read in terms of voltages okay so you need to change it depending on and using the gauge of law or ohm's law okay so um Example of where you are going to use it is in the mobile robot that you have uh, you have already done in task number three before this. Okay, so you have the Arduino over there and then you have the motor driver. So how do you move it? So because you want to control the motor forward and backward motion using the same uh, motor. Eh? So you need to have a motor driver or we call it as the H drive. Okay, if you purchase the Arduino, eh? normally they have the motor driver together, but you can always design your motor driver on your own, okay, using some resistance and so on, okay. 
and um, you have the sensor okay, that you have learned before this. You have the line following sensor and you have the autonomic sensor. So, so example of uh, output from sensor to controller is that okay, the microcontroller or Arduino require digital signal. So you need to convert the sensor, the actuator, okay, the motor reading from analog to digital first. The, the quality of the signal is too small in millivolts, so you need to amplify it. Okay, or the signal is too noisy, especially when you are using ultrasonic sensor because it's reading the, the environment, it's reading a frequency. Okay, so if you have too many readings, so uh, you need to use a filtering okay, to filter out the unwanted noises. So how to filter that out? You need to know what is the frequency of the noise. Example, now I think you are uh, hearing the background noise of the aircon. Eh? Okay, how does a uh, uh, noise filtering work is that it can uh, calculate what is the frequency of the noise. Okay, frequency of the noise. You know, frequency. Okay. Um, where's my pen? Frequency of the noise. If you look at the frequency of the noise, it lo looks something like this. So on, eh? Okay. And frequency, you know that the frequency is F equal to 1 over T. Okay. T means that the one, one period. Okay, the signal is repeating eh? so let's say that if i draw the zoom view for this part and eh? zoom view lah example i draw it okay the signal will look like this repeating okay so this is we call it as one cycle p value okay so from there you can know what is the frequency of this noise, this net background noise. And from there, you can use low pass filter to filter that noise. Okay, so that how that is how filtering works. Eh? You need to know what is the frequency of that noise. So, and it will filter that noise out of the environment. Okay, okay number three, uh, the, the next one is the output from controller to the actuator. Okay, so if you see here, this is an example of connection uh, in, in, in the simulator. Eh? We have Arduino, Uno, we have the motor driver connected to two motors, left and right motor, and you have the line volume sensor connected to the Arduino. Okay, so the actuator can uh, require analog signal. Okay, reading from the uh, Arduino. Eh? Okay, so Basically, to move an actuator, you need to give it in terms of voltage. Okay, when you give it in terms of voltage, then only it can move. So, you need to have the digital signal. Okay, digital to analog signal. Convert it first from the Arduino to analog signal, then only it can read. And uh, sometimes when it's too small, the signal, then you need to amplify. So, same thing. And most mostly um, for an actuator uh, or for a controller, uh, signal is does not have any noises because normally you already filter out. Okay, you you do a programming and you already filter out the noise, so it's a clean signal going into the actuator. Okay, so this uh this is an example of how uh the setup of a mini DSP board or what we are using here is a microcontroller board at Mega, which is the Arduino Uno. Eh? Okay. Okay, so um, I explained a bit on what uh, are the parts or component inside uh, the Arduino, eh? so that it's going to be related to the signal conditioning part and also to your to the rest of the topic later on. So in Arduino, eh, so you have the USB port. USB port is used for powering it up, powering up the Arduino board. Okay, you can connect it to your computer and also to upload program from the Arduino IDE. Okay, once you do the coding in Arduino IDE, then you upload the program. Of course, when you before you upload the program, it's best to do the simulation first. So that's why I share to you the uh, simulator, eh? the, uh, the simulator um, that you need to download. Okay, 
you need to download the simulator and then uh, log in and I hope that you already make an account okay Tinkercad eh? so Tinkercad it's actually from AutoCAD but it's a uh, it's a uh, lower version of AutoCAD lah because if you see in Tinkercad you can also design you can also draw out okay uh, some design eh, inside there and uh, power connector is of course to power the Arduino. You, so there are two ways to power up the Arduino. It's either using the USB port or is it or using power connector. Normally, uh, we will use power connector. Uh, means that it's connected to the battery lah. If you already upload the program, so once you upload the program to Arduino, the program is already inside. Okay, unless you reset it out, you delete it, then it's empty. But once once your upload is still inside there, so you do not need to always connect the Arduino to a USB port. You can use power connector only for powering up to to any supplier voltage value. Eh? It's going to battery lah, basically. And for the uh, for the Arduino also you have the reset button. Sometimes when you after you do the programming and then you connect all the ports, okay, required ports to the sensor or the actuator. And then you test out the program. First time it's okay. Next, second time you test it out, it's not working. Okay, even though the first time it works, eh? so you might want to reset. Reset button is that to reset, start again the process. So to just reset it, it's not deleting the program, just to reset it and start over. Okay, and because there's no start and, uh, on and off button in the Arduino, eh? it's just a reset button. Once you connect to the power connector, it's automatically on. Okay. And you have the power LED. Power LED indicator that the Arduino Uno is uh, power up lah. Okay, they are kind uh, in green light. Yeah. And you have the uh, transmitter and receiver LED. Okay, transmitter and receiver LED means that the Arduino is connecting to the hardware. It's giving the, it's sending signal to the hardware. Hardware means that the sensor, the actuator, the display is sending signal. It will be blinking rapidly. Yeah? Okay. And you have the ground value, of course, and you have a five pin value, five volt pin value. You have uh, over there is uh, five pin. And also, okay, Arduino for Uno, Arduino is maximum five volt only, okay, not 10 volt. So it depends eh, on the Arduino. Eh? So make sure that you always check different type of Arduino have different type of output voltage eh? okay so um and you can see over here okay there are analog pins okay analog pins missing input okay just look at the arduino in terms of uh box eh? box it will help it will help you to convert um uh, your program okay your input that you want an output so for example okay i want to push a to 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 press a push button eh? okay that push button will start uh will actually move rotate a motor so motor will be the output okay so start button is the input so meaning that the start button will be connected to one of these analog pins okay so if you see here the analog pin is limited you have only five uh, you have only six port six port zero a zero until a five a is analog eh? so uh, analog zero one two three until five so maximum input that you can use for arduino uno is only five so limited okay because this is a mini dsp port so if you want to have more than five input then uh, you can use a uh, advanced arduino uh, much more expensive like a bit more expensive than this lah. but if your like your project later on idp project or even for your fyp project doesn't need much input five is okay then uh, six is okay then it's uh, you can use this arduino uno okay yeah? and then you have the digital pins the output over here so for the digital pins is that you have uh, a lot of digital pin you have from 0 to 13 means that 14 uh, output pins eh? means that you connect connect a lot of uh, uh, output lah means that you you can connect motor you can connect display and so on and also indication here is that uh, there is a pwm which is noted by this uh, 
is labeling this. This video by M is noted by this one. Eh? So you have from zero to the uh, selected port only, port three, five, six, nine, ten, eleven. Eh? Okay. And lastly, is that uh, you will see that there is one LED pin here over here, which is this is a built in LED directly in the Arduino, meaning that. Okay, this pin 13, okay, if you do not connect it to a LED, okay, to a physical LED, you can already test out this uh, program. Eh? So this LED will blink accordingly, according to the program. So example, if you uh, assume that uh, you are going to connect this pin 13 to a moto, moto eh? so you don't need to have a moto to actually test out the program. You can use Arduino also. And connect, uh, do the programming and connect that motor to pin number 13. So it's uh, it's uh, actually uh, built in, okay, for, as an indicator, eh? okay, built in indicator. So this are uh, uh, example of uh, Arduino. You can click on this video, okay. And what I asked you before is to install the Arduino IDE. Okay, and also uh, audio simulator, please make sure that you log in because this uh, this example, okay, this example is example. Eh? Later, you are going to work as in a group to do one task. Eh? One task is to control a motor using H bridge. Okay, so you are going to use the simulator to simulate it first. Okay, so let's look at the video. Wait, where's the video? Oh, where's my mouse? Can you hear anything on the video? No? Can you hear anything? Yes, okay. So, in this video, is actually uh, I'm simulating a display unit, okay? Oscilloscope and also it's connected to a buzzer. The sound just now is a buzzer. Okay, so and also I'm also connecting it to the same output motor. So basically, what you see uh, in this video is that okay, so I'm using pin number nine, eh? pin number nine, and it's connecting to the uh, LED, okay, physical LED, and I also connect it to the buzzer so that it will uh, give sound as an indicator. Eh? And just for the sake of showing a movement, I also connect that output to a motor. So if you have this type of breadboard, eh, board like this, you can use one output pin P to the same. Uh, line and you can connect it to multiple output okay so this is a, a very simple example that you're going to do later on eh, in the team in the group eh? okay so now it's 10 21 okay um, okay i'm just going on this one we already explained um Okay, this one already experienced. So the same thing as eh? general uh, signal condition diagram. Eh? You have the sensor, so you need to process first the analog signal. So you need to convert it from analog to digital. Okay, why? Because you have a digital computer. So that's why we call it as computerized. Eh? And then because of you have already digital signal, then you can uh, display it. Okay, display it to the any display unit or to record it that 
capture the data. Okay, so here is example of one problem. Eh? Okay, this is example past year question last time. Past year question last like like five years ago. But okay, so figure one shows. Okay, I show this. Okay, figure one shows an electromagnetic radiation sensor, which is used for explosive detection application using mobile robot. Okay, the sensor works by converting electromagnetic wave to detect signal. Okay, the sensor okay, is used for detecting signal in kilohertz and above range. So, the analog signal received is very weak and suffer from power cable noises. Okay, from this description, eh, okay, explain five different function of signal conditioning. Okay, and then discuss signal conditioning requirement and outline solution to input the signal from an automatic sensor to a computer. And C is design a circuit to amplify the output signal 1000 times, amplify it to the original value. Okay, what you need to identify first is what does what is the requirement? Okay, so requirement is um, it's used for explosive detection application. Okay, means that it's very sensitive. Okay? Second one is to detect signal in kilohertz and above range, means that you need to have a filtering. Okay, you need to filter to low filth, uh, low frequency, only the one the high range frequency. And a third one is the analog signal received is very weak. So very weak, so you need to amplify the signal. Okay. Another requirement that you can see in the question is that they ask you, okay, the, the, you need to do a requirement for signal conditioning whereby it is needed to send it to a, the signal send it to a computer. So meaning that you need to have the signal read in digital. So you need to have a A to D converter. Okay. So based on that requirement is require protection, okay, because of you have the explosive detection application, okay, you need to make sure that uh, you have a protective uh, circuit, you need a require, you require filtering because of you want to filter out this, the frequency, third one you require amplification, number three here, and fourth one is that you require a analog to digital controller A to D, okay. So why? So you need to explain reason why lah, why you need all of those things. Okay, already explained before. And uh, this one, um, what's this one? Oh, okay. Okay, so this is already into the slide, okay, on the each of the uh, parts eh, uh, in under signal conditioning. So protection, okay. To avoid that, then you need to have the xenodiode, okay, to for avoid prior, uh, the high voltage and wrong polarity. So xenodiode only uh, allows you to have uh, the voltage value up to the point, uh, the value of the xenodiode. So example, xenodiode have five volt. So more than five volt, the the fuse will collapse. Okay, so that's uh, why you need to have a protection um, circuit, eh. Okay, second one is uh, detail on that, you can read the textbook and also try to uh, use the technology that you have. Try to use uh, additional references from YouTube also. Okay, what is another yard? How does it function? Eh? Second one is ATD, already explained just now. Okay, how, does, how do you actually um, convert from analog to digital is that you are going to use a sample and hold of the time value, eh? Okay, the analog value is sample and map out to the digital signal. So it's either sound, light, and temperature. Okay, so example of a signal in continuous time, yeah, analog value. So how can it be read by the uh, board, eh, Arduino board or computer? Is that you need to use a uh, sampling. So you are going to sample this signal, okay, by an interval sampling time. Lah, sampling time normally, uh, we uh, you can use sampling time t equal to t equal to one example, but if a very good DSV board, then you can use t equal to one millisecond, right? So it's up to the uh, capacity, the range of that DSV board. Eh? 
And this one, uh, if you have learned the signal, signal system, actually A to D, how do you do the sampling, converting from the continuous time to discrete time, you will learn it in uh, signal system eh, later. So how to convert that, you can try using MATLAB. If you have MATLAB, then you just insert, just type out this code and you can try to get the discrete time value. Okay, and what is the value? What does it mean by this one? Eh? So this n means that the num the n that integral lah, from zero to sixty. So zero to sixty. So when you have n here, n here is that you want to digitize the signal, this analog signal into discrete, and you are using two as the interval. T is two. Okay, that's why you see here that every two seconds is on, is going to sample this. So it's sampling at this value. Yeah? It's like on an off switch. So sample, sample, sample every two seconds. Okay. And subplot is used to actually plot this two graph. Last subplot 211 means that plot this graph. 212 is plotting this graph. Yeah? Okay. So next one is D2A. So D2A, you know that it's going to read in binary. Binary means that this one, this is binary, eh? binary value. Okay. So you're going to want to convert it into analog. So analog is read, read in this type of value. Lah. Okay. And um, part one is PWM, pulse width modulation. Okay, password modulation is use a okay, key to encode a message to positing uh, signal. Eh? So if you remember in uh, controlling a motor, you can use PWM to control the speed of the motor. Okay, when you increase the ratio of the PWM, then you can increase the motor rotation. Okay, so uh, this is example. If you increase the value of the PWM and you see that the turning angle also increase lah, or the speed of the motor also increase. Okay, and um, the ratio is referring to this one and on and off time period. So what is the voltage that you give to the motor? For example, the uh, motor can run up to 10 volt. So you give the motor 10 volt up to uh, five seconds and then you off it five seconds and repeat it okay so we call this as the pwm ratio yeah. okay the the ratio or the duty cycle eh? this one eh? duty cycle okay component on oh, this one already done okay next one is amplifier okay amplifier lots of amplifier okay so uh, uh, but one that you need to understand is this type, four types, eh? inverting, non-inverting, and summing and differential amplifier. So please go through. This one is a very simple one. I think you have learned it in circuit, eh? circuit, uh, circuit uh, one or two. Okay, just go through that one. And lastly, on filtering, also same thing. Okay, filtering, there are four types of filter, low-pass filter, high-pass, bandwidth, and band-stop filter. Okay, so um, read through where do you need to use this different type of filtering. Eh? Also, uh, that, uh, we have the information is in the slide and in the textbook. Eh? Okay, and lastly is on the multiplexer. Okay, when you have a lot of analog signal coming in, eh? and then you want to plot it into one block. Okay, so you are going to combine it. So you need to actually uh, several analog channels are processed sequentially. So you want it to actually switch between which input. Okay, so you need to use a multiplexer over here. Okay, and then only the output is being sent to the uh, A2D to the transit and sent to the uh, microcontroller. And lastly is the DAQ. So DAQ is data acquisition is something that uh, uh, used to process or collecting data from sensor and moving them into computer. So Arduino is one a part example of a DS, DAQ card, eh? a very a simple DAQ card. Okay. So all of these sensors are connected via signal conditioning to the data acquisition and plug into a computer. So right now, actually, if you look at your laptop or even your PC, actually you have a dead bot inside. 
Okay, you have a bot inside. So it's going to read everything. Okay. So this one, okay, you already done example. Okay, task one. Eh? Do we have time? We have 30 minutes. Okay, you have class after this. Do you have class of this online? Yeah, it's okay. If yes, then okay, it's okay. So what you need to do is, okay, um, do task one, okay, individual. Uh, task one and task two, individual. Eh? Next week, we are going to go to task three, okay? Next week. But you can already go through what are the information for task three, eh? And task three is going to be a group, uh, group uh, task, eh? So task one, okay? Explain the five different functions of signal conditioning and application in control engineering application. So the five types that already explained just now, but I explained it briefly. So what you need to do is that, okay, for this five type, okay, put it into a table and for each of it, protection, okay, diagram of operation principle. So example just now, a diagram of the circuit using Zener diode, and eh? So draw a diagram. The theory of operation, explaining of that diagram. And also example of application. Where do you use that in the diagram? For application. Example. Eh? Same goes to application. So amplification, you have a lot of. You remember amplification just now? You have four types of amplification of M circuit. Eh? So you need to list out all those four types of uh, op M circuit and also it's a it's a diagram lah, and explain its operation. Okay, so, um, and noise re reduction, same thing. Just now we have filtering. Filtering, you have four types of filtering. You have the low pass filter, you have the high pass filter, and then you have the, what else? You have the uh, band pass filter, okay? And uh, so, explain, mean, means that under the uh, noise reduction, you need to have uh, A, B, and C, and D lah, the four, eh? The okay, signal multiplication is A to D, D to A, and the conversion is uh, more to the uh, the gain value just now that I explained eh, using the program. So, and task two, uh, also same thing, individual task. Okay, you can take this to take home, take home lah. So next week, uh, submission date is by next week by uh, Wednesday. Yeah. So, in this task is that. Explain the different function of the circuit below. Eh? This is a more advanced circuit than what you have learned in previously. So, in uh, that's one. Eh? So, look out for voltage divider, phase bridge, and western bridge. Okay, draw out what is the operating principle. Draw out the circuit. Okay, how it's connected because this you are going to use it later in task number three when you develop the circuit and simulate it later using Arduino, okay? So, um, and application, where do you use this? Okay, so task one and two, you need to do uh, the for this lessons, okay? For this uh, week, week six lesson. Task three, you just go through what you need to, uh, what you need to do as a group, yeah, later on. So you're going to use what you have developed here in this uh, task two, and then we are going to you are going to connect it to the Arduino and try to simulate the output. Okay, so uh, if possible for each of this, you are going to connect it to one sort of output. For example, a motor, an LED, or a buzzer. Okay, choose one. Eh? And uh, in take a take a cat. Okay, maybe some of you guys never used Arduino before. Don't worry. Okay, in Tinkercad, Tinkercad, if you log in, there is a tutorial. Try to find the tutorial of introduction to Arduino. Eh? From there, it will explain step by step how to use it. Okay, how to code, start off with coding and so on. It's a very basic uh, explanation. Eh? So, if you take time to do it over the weekend, okay, so I think you can uh, manage to actually do this task later on because it's a group task. Eh? Okay, so um, and the end by the end of this task three is that you're going to upload a video explaining the simulation lah that you did eh? about the sensor or the actuator and display unit that you use, and of course you need to also explain the voltage divider part. Okay, so explaining the video is that video is video, but 
I pref I expect that you are going to use a PowerPoint slide lah to explain on the um, circuit eh, how it is connected to all of the sensor and so on. Alright, so I think that's all for this week um, six. Any question? Any question? No, madam. Okay, no. Um, Doctor. Oh, uh, yes. Doctor, do the touch one and touch two on PowerPoint on Microsoft Word. Touch okay. Um, the task one and two. Okay, task uh. one and two. Okay, the in the padlet. Let me just open the padlet. Padlet. What what is the interaction in padlet? I forgot. I think I didn't. Did I mention? Okay, did 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 did. Okay, I didn't mention it. Eh? Okay, but uh, for me, I prefer that you do it. Um, I think because it's going to be quite long, if you do it in a uh, PowerPoint, you might need uh, for each of the function one slide. Eh? Okay, so uh, you can either do using PowerPoint is also okay. Using Word is also okay. Okay, and like I mentioned before, for the previous task, when you want to, when you need, when you need to draw a diagram, please don't copy paste from the internet draw it out on your own yeah because why in final exam maybe some of the question that i give to you in this task are going to come out maybe yeah maybe okay so if you don't practice now drawing it out you are not going to learn to write it out later on draw it out later on yeah you cannot remember because you didn't practice so uh, please draw on your own. It, it's okay if you don't have the stylus, the pen. Use pen, pen and paper. Okay? Write it on a piece of paper. If you don't have a laptop, it's okay to just use uh, A4 paper. Draw it out, write it out, then scan it, upload it to this padlet. Okay? As, as long as you submit. Okay? If it's easy for you to use handwriting, then use handwriting. If it's easy for you to use Word or PowerPoint, use Word or PowerPoint, right? Okay, any more uh, questions? No, all right. Thank you, Lotta. Understand. All right. All right. Uh, the rest of the student? Okay. Um, I already up, uh, opened the, web, the feedback form since I know that you guys will forgot <laughs> to, to, to click on the feedback. So we have like 20 minutes before we uh, 10 minutes before we finish class so just click on the feedback okay it's open the question is simple it's not going to uh, to relate to the task one and two that i give you just now so what you have learned today and what uh, you you are going to uh, uh, what you don't understand eh? and uh, i think for chapter four eh, for this for chapter four where eh, i delete this one first because chapter four we didn't enter yet eh? all right so just uh, summarize on what you have learned in chapter three. Chapter four, because, um, but, but chapter four, not much actually. Okay, if you go to chapter four slide, the start is very simple. Eh? Okay. okay you, you will see that only, how many slides? Eh? Ten, ten slides. Eh? Ten pages. So you can just go through the chapter four here. Okay, chapter four, what are the meter and so on, what is LED, okay, display unit, okay, segment, seven segment display, how do, does, do you read it, the DAQ, uh, data logger, and so on. So it's kind of uh, simple and um, you can just go through this and if you still need uh, some additional explanation, you can always go to my YouTube channel. Let me just look. Let me just YouTube channel. Find
introduction to mechanism. You can look at this one one year ago, eh, the class on BEKM 2342. This one, it was a recording. Um, try to find the topic. Oh, yeah, this, uh, this is one See? is sensor and transducer. Okay, let me just check you four, five. Okay. Oh, this one is pneumatic. Oh, data presentation just now. I saw it. Where was it? Oh, this one, data presentation. Yeah? So you can click this one, data presentation, and you can listen to the explanation. Yeah? All right. So I think you can just proceed with chapter four also on the explanation. And after that, uh, I think by next week, I will up uh, the, the question for MCQ for chapter three and four also. Okay, so that you can test it out because why midterm exam will cover all these four chapters. Okay, so at least you have gone through a similar type of question nah, before you go for midterm exam. Eh? Okay, um, any question? And of course, don't forget to always refer to the Bolton textbook that I showed, uh, PDF that I shared to you guys. Eh? Okay, so the same thing. Um, if if you look at the Bolton chapter three here, okay, you will see that the one that I explained just now in the slide is the the circle everything is also in the textbook. It's actually I my my slide is based on the textbook. Of course, it's the same. Okay, just that in the textbook the explanation will be in detail because it's in paragraph. Yeah, it's just it's like telling a story. So um. I prefer that student read from textbook and then refer to my notes. Nah. Okay, uh, when you are not clear, uh, but my notes is just summarize. Okay, so to know more about the information, then you need to go to the textbook. Yeah? Okay, I think that's all. Um, can we like everybody open your, your camera just that we can get uh, uh, a screenshot? of everyone okay okay who else the girls eh uh, siapa ni oh dalam bas eh siapa ni uh, Aiman dalam bas eh ha dalam bas hmm. boleh dengar ke boleh, boleh dengar boleh boleh boleh, <laughs> boleh. okay okay alright so ready Okay, ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, thank you guys. So hopefully if you are driving back or back home to your hometown, please make sure that you drive carefully eh, or that's all lah and come back in one piece and get ready for the next uh, uh, semester, next uh, half, half, apa, half cycle lah, okay? But we still have class next week eh, online. Just that uh, I think you guys will have a very long holiday, right? Three weeks eh? at home, right? Three weeks up until the uh, the midterm break. And then you come back in week eight. So I just afraid that I hope that students don't just take it uh, too easy at home. Make sure that you still uh, follow the class eh, by the lecturer. Okay, so that we all. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Right. Thank you, Doctor. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Anything.